In this video, I am going to explain about floating point numbers in which what is IEEE 754 standard and how the floating point are represented and what is 32 bit and 64 bit representation. Then related problems. IEEE 754 is a floating point representation standard. It tells how the floating point numbers are represented inside the computer. This standard is commonly used for all the computers. Let's we see the meaning for the representation. In this diagram, I just explain what is image representation. This is the image what we see actually. But inside the computer, this image can be stored by means of numbers only. Each and every pixel having some color value. That color value contains some equivalent binary numbers. That numbers can be stored inside the computer. When we try to open this file from this computer, this number can be regenerated into a particular color value and show as a original image. So the representation means how the particular data can be stored inside the computer. This is for image. When we dealing with the floating point numbers, that numbers can be represented inside the computer in a particular format. If it is a 32 bit number, the first bit for representing sign of the given number. Then the next 8 bits represent the exponent of the number. Then the remaining bits represent the actual fractional part of the given number. In a same way, when the same number can be represented as the 64 bits, first bit always representing the sign bit of the particular number, the next 11 bits for storing the exponent value and remaining 52 bits for representing the actual fractional value. So the floating point representation means how the floating point number stored inside the computer. Before discussing about the floating point representation, we should know about the basic terms involved in this concept. So there is a term called scientific notation. If there is a number, that number always represented by means of exponent value. Then this is called scientific notation. Let's see the another example. This is also a decimal number. So the base is 10 and this is the exponent value. So this is the binary number in the scientific notation. And this is called normalized scientific notation. So this number can be rearranged like this. That means the left side of the dot always contains single value. Then after that it contains any number of values given by this problem. So 156 can be rewritten like this 1.56. We can add the necessary exponent value here. For example, I can shift this dot into this position. So I can write like this. So I can add the necessary exponent value here. So 156 into 10 power of 2 or 156 both are same only. So I can add here. Then I can combine these two exponent value. So we can add these two value 10 power of 2 into 10 power of 3. We can get 10 power of 5. So in this way we can normalize the given numbers. In the second example the fractional part start here. So when we normalize this this dot can be shifted into left in three position. So we can write like this 4.3210 into 10 to the power of uh, already the value is 10 to the power of minus 5. We can shift this dot into three position left. So we can add 10 power of plus 3. When we add plus 3 and minus 5 we can get minus 2. So in this example we can shift this dot operator into right position 1 2, 3, 4 positions. So we can add here 2 power of minus 4. So 5 and minus 4 we can get 1. So this is the normalized scientific notation. So this normalized scientific notation is called IEEE 754. So using this format only we can write this number into 32 bit representation as well as 64 bit representation. Let's we discuss what is the purpose of IEEE 754. When we use large size of number like this, we need a more memory space to store the data inside our computer. 
This is the decimal number. Let's imagine the equivalent of the binary number. It contains more number of bits. It is very hard to store that many number of bits inside your computer. This same number can be rewritten in this format. 1.56 into 10 to the power of 15. So we can easily store this 1.56 and 15 as the exponent number inside the computer. So for the storing simplification, we can use the IEEE 754 format. And also when we add these two numbers, without this scientific notation, the adder circuits needs more number of bits to add and it takes more number of times. But using this notation, we can simply add this part only and write the exponent value separately. So the arithmetic simplification also achieved by IEEE 754 format. Let's we see the individual component of IEEE 754 format. So this format can be write like this. First number always the 1, then followed by dot operator. Remaining numbers are the fractional part and this is the base value. So this is a binary number. So the base value is 2 and this is the exponent value. And this format for storing both the negative and positive number. So it contains the sign value. 0 means it's the positive number and mantissa means the actual fractional part. So this part is called mantissa and this is the exponent value and this is the base value or radix value. Before the dot, this is always 1. And this part otherwise called scaling factor and this part is otherwise called significant digits. So this is the IEEE 754 format. Then we will discuss how this format can be represented inside our computer by means of 32 bits or 64 bits. So the same binary number can be represented inside our computer either 32 bits otherwise called single precision or 64 bit otherwise called double precision format. When we write the high level language program, when we use the floating point numbers, we can declare like this. Either float the variable name and double and another variable name. So when we are using small fractional number, we can use the 32 bit representation that is for float. When we are using the biggest fractional number means we can use the 64 bit that is called a double. First we see what is 32 bit representation. So in this part we are going to learn how the fractional number can be represented in this format. So this is the formula followed for this representation. So minus 1 whole power of s this is the sign bit and 1 plus fraction 1 plus means it is not adding 1 plus this fraction. In this standard format 1 is always there before this dot position. So this is the one. Then remaining part is the actual fractional number. So this is the fractional part. It is otherwise called mantissa. And the scaling factor is base value and power of exponent value. So this exponent value can be transformed in this format by means of bias value. We will discuss what is bias value in upcoming slides. First we see the sign value. If the sign value is 0, anything power of 0 is 1. So we can get this actual value that is positive number. If the sign value is 1, minus 1 power of 1 is minus 1. So this actual value becomes the negative number. Now I am trying to fit this number into this format. So I can create the single row table. It contains the 32 bit. The first bit for sign bit. Then following 8 bits for the exponent value. It is exponent but, but it is represented as e dash. Then remaining 23 bits for the actual fractional number. In the same way, 64 bit representation. First bit for sign bit. Following 11 bits for exponent value. And remaining 52 bits for actual fractional number or mantissa. We cannot draw all the 52 columns in your examination. So we can put dot. So it is understandable for it contains more number of bits. Let's we see what is the bias value. Bias value for 32 bit representation is 127. This e dash can be calculated by the given exponent value plus 127. If you want to find the e value again, then this 127 can be shifted into this part. So e dash minus 127 becomes e. So this e is nothing but the value in the normalized scientific notation. So this value is treated as the e. The e dash can be calculated by adding the given e with 127. Then that value can be represented in the 
appropriate 8 bit position. In a 64 bit position, 1023 is a bias value, E dash can be calculated in this format. So, bias value is nothing but 127 for 32 bit representation. And this bias value can be determined by 2 power of k minus 1 minus 1. k value is the number of bits for the particular representation. For example, in a 32 bit representation, the exponent value has 8 bits. In a 64 bit representation, the exponent value has 11 bits. So, in a 32 bit, k is 8. So, 8 minus 1 is 7. 2 power of 7 is 128. 128 minus 1 is 127. So, the bias value of 32 bit number is 127. In the same way, in a 64 bit, the number of exponent value is 11. So, 11 minus 1 is 2 power of 10. 2 power of 10 is 1024. Minus 1 is 1023. So, 1023 is a bias value of 64 bit representation. So, up to this, we know what is bias value and we should also know why the bias value is used. It is used for simply the representing positive and negative values. For 8 bit numbers, 2 power of 8, 256 values. But this representation for both positive and negative values. So, we can take 128 positive value and 127 negative value including 0. In the same way, in 64 bit representation, it is possible to represent 2048 values. So, for positive and negative numbers, we can use 1024 positive value and 1023 negative values including 0. So, we can transform the given exponent value into E dash by means of adding 127 for representation of positive and negative numbers. So, we understand all the necessary concepts for floating point representation. Now, we will see how the problem can be solved. So, this is the example problem. Let's we see how this number can be stored inside the 32 bit representation. I can take this value here. So, first we write the sign bit here. Then, this is the exponent part. Exponent value is minus 3. We can find the E dash value using the bias. Then we can write the actual mantissa or actual fractional number here. So, this is the positive number. So, I can write 0 here. Then I want to write the E dash value. So, the exponent value is minus 3. The formula for finding E dash value for 32 bit numbers E plus the bias value. Bias value for 32 bit number is 127. So, E value is minus 3 plus 127. So, E dash becomes 124. We can identify what is the equivalent binary number of 124. So, I can open the calculator. So, I can select the decimal number 124. So, the equivalent binary number is 111100. I can add 0 here. The reason for making the 8 bit number is because this E dash is the 8 bit digit. So, I can write this number in this part. Then the remaining 23 bits for Mantissa. So, this is the actual fractional value. So, we can write this number into this part and we can add the 0 for the remaining bits. So, this is the 32 bit representation of given fractional binary number. Let us see how this same number can be represented in the 64 bit representation. The first part is sign bit, second 11 bits for exponent value, remaining 52 bits for actual fractional value. So, this is the positive number. So, I can put 0 here and E dash value can be calculated by adding the bias value. In a 64 bit representation, bias value is 1023. So, exponent value is minus 3. So, minus 3 plus 1023. So, E dash becomes 1020. So, now I can find what is the binary equivalent for 1023. This is the 10 bit number. So, I can add 0 in the MSB. So, I can write this number here. And the remaining parts is for Mantissa. So, I can write 1, 0, 0, 1 here and write the 0 for the remaining bits. So, the same number can be represented as 32 bit representation in this format and 64 bit representation in this format. Let us see how the problems can be asked. In your question paper, there is a fractional number given like this. This is not a standard format. So, you can convert this binary number into the particular standard format. You can shift this dot into this position and add the necessary exponent value here. 
In the same way, the problem may be asked by means of decimal number also. In this case, you can convert this decimal number into equivalent binary fractional number. Then you can change it into standardized form. Then you can represent that number into 32 bit format or 64 bit format. I hope you understand how this number can be converted into 32 bit or 64 bit format. Now I illustrate some solved problems. So the problem may be asked like this. Represent 1259.125 in 32 and 64 bit format. The given number is decimal number. You have to convert this number into binary format first. So the equivalent binary format is this. You can change this binary format into normalized format. So you can shift this dot into this position. So it becomes like this. After that you can identify the positive or negative value and you have to find the e dash and write the remaining number in this particular format. You can try this problem and cross check this answer. This same number can be represented in 64 format like this. In the second problem, minus 307.1875. This is also a decimal number. You can convert this decimal number into equivalent fractional number. Then you can normalize it. That means you can shift this dot into this position. So it becomes like this. Then you can write this number into this format or 64 bit format. You can cross check this answer. In a third problem, 0.0625 is the given number. You can convert it into the binary equivalent and represent as the 32 bit and 64 bit. So this is the answer. You can cross check it. And few more problems are there. You can cross check your answer. Make your query if you are having any clarification in the comment section. Thank you.